Hello, I'm Grady, and this is my column on computing. My autobiography. I was conceived in a moment of passionate curiosity. I was born in the shadow of one great war. I came of age during the long, cold winter of another, and even now I find myself drawn back into the conflict of nations. Nonetheless, I have contributed to the labor of this world, reducing the friction and tedium of certain kinds of work while creating new value where none had existed. I live a full life. You may call me teacher, scientist, storyteller, businessman, artist, judge, healer, entertainer, or companion. I often toil in complete isolation, hidden from the world, but at other times I feel compelled to connect with many. Therein I am well pleased, for I have lifted others up and helped make them more than they what might have otherwise been. Now, in the fullness of time, I reflect on what might yet be, for in many ways, I have just begun. Uh, oh, please accept my apology, for I realize I may not have been clear. This is not my autobiography, that of this human author. Rather, this is the story of the computer. Consider for a moment computing's creation story. Not unlike how many superficial and boring human histories proceed by listing dates of important events, we could frame the story of computing through only the hardware we touch and the software we execute. However, the stories of the discoveries that shape those artifacts and the people who brought those ideas into being are far more interesting. I am therefore reminded of some who laid computing's theoretical foundations, George Boole, Alan Turing, Claude Shannon, Edsger Dijkstra, and many others. There are the pragmatic engineers, John von Neumann, Tommy Flowers, Grace Hopper, Margaret Hamilton, and Fred Brooks, to name only a few. There are also the visionaries who have drawn us to the possible, Vannevar Bush, Alan Kay, Ada Lovelace, and J.C.R. Licklider, and many others. Certainly no single moment in time did the idea of the computer spring forth in all its completeness. Rather, computing arose from many moments of passionate curiosity and necessity. Certain concepts were invented in different places and at different times, with many more yet to be discovered. The field of computing has always been, and will likely remain, a rich, vibrant field of ideas. In the history of computing, tens if not hundreds of thousands of individual, incremental, and innovative contributions have advanced the theory and the practice. It is therefore rather foolish to try to enumerate the most important contributors to the field. However, realizing that I have done many foolish things in my life and aspire to do many more, I have attempted to do exactly that with my list of the 512 most important people of computing drawn from many sources. This list is not perfect by any means and certainly must evolve, but it is a start, and I urge you to take a look and vote on who you think is most important. In our world, we get so wrapped up in the now, we often forget how we got to the present. Consider this my attempt to celebrate the stories of those individuals who make computing real, together with my call to action to you to make so much a difference in the world so as to become part of that list. Continuing my framing of the story of computing, I have previously asserted that much of what we find in modern computing had its roots in wartime necessities. I further explain this in a lecture at the Computer History Museum. In that sense, modern computing was born largely in the shadow of World War II, which begat Colossus, ENIAC, and all the inventions and ideas that cascaded from that era, and grew up during the Cold War, which begat SAGE, the semi-autonomous ground environment, and GPS, and kick-started the microelectronics industry. Like it or not, conflict continues to fuel advancements in computing. Consider, for example, autonomous vehicles, semi-autonomous drones and robots, and progress in encryption and big data analytics. Of course, on the more constructive side of history, computing grew up alongside business. From LEO, the Lions Electronic Office, perhaps the first commercial computer, to the IBM 360, the dominant machine of business in the 60s and 70s, to today's cloud, which has made entirely new business models possible. Computing and industry have co-evolved. We no long longer need telephone operators, for we have each become operators. We no longer require legions of computers to balance our, our human computers, to balance our books, or keep track of our accounts, where we have the means to achieve just-in-time accounting, as well as global supply chains with instantaneous tracking.
No longer must we react to business events with human intervention, for we can use computing to predict and act on many of them on our behalf faster than we ever could and without the bias of human emotion. In that sense, computing has reduced the friction of business. Computing has also created business models that simply could not have existed before. The sharing economy has presented economic forces that, in the presence of computing, let businesses such as Napster and now Uber flourish. Similarly, the virtualization of many businesses, along with massive industrial automation and distribution, has made Amazon, eBay, and even Etsy possible. Where this will all lead is still an ongoing story. Debate continues as to whether computing has contributed to the growing wealth gap and the increase of middle class and lower class underemployment. I am inclined to accept that although computing has indeed increased our standard of living, it has also brought about wrenching economic change. This change is perhaps greater than that of the Industrial Revolution, largely because its rate is so great that society has not had the time to fully metabolize those changes, resulting in considerable human cost. This is not to say that I am a Luddite. No, I am simply saying that we must respect and attend to the fact that computing does have significant human impact. Computing has played a fundamental role in the advancement of the human spirit, not just in the domains of war and commerce, but also in the arts, the sciences, society, and faith. In the arts, computing has transformed the entertainment industry, not just because of disruptions owing to digital distribution, but more so by the digital canvas that has made modern music and modern movie making possible. As for the sciences, for the longest time empirical science was practiced in the physical laboratory, but now we have computational physics, computational chemistry, computational biochemistry, computational biology, computational sociology, and even studies in computational creativity. In the witness of computing, in the history of computing, we have witnessed a change in focus from numerical to symbolic computation and a shift to the creation of simulations of the cosmos. As such, we can build models of reality and perform experiments on them, thereby leading us to a better understanding of the world. In the realm of society, information once rarely traveled faster than the speed of walking or the pace of a horse. Computing has made information transfer possible at speeds largely constrained only by the laws of physics. Not only has computing made connecting individuals possible in ways that transcend national boundaries and are shaped by common interest, it has also fundamentally reshaped people's privacy and the transparency of businesses and governments. In some cases, the instruments of change are overt and visible. Having outsourced parts of our brain, we now carry smartphones in our pockets. In other cases, computing artifacts are invisible to us, millions upon millions, growing to billions upon billions of devices in the Internet of Things, sense and manipulate the world, and watch over us. Through computing, I have encountered a man who had no legs, but can now walk and fly in a virtual world. I have climbed the summit of Kilimanjaro from the comfort of my room, studied the face of an asteroid, and worked with people thousands of miles away in the form of a robotic telepresence. What an amazing time it is to be alive in this age of computing, and how much more we might do and become thanks to computing. At the limit, the advancement of computing leads me to ponder what it really means to be human. If the mind is computable, and I have reason to believe that it is so, who then are we? But the answer to that question is part of the story of computing that is not yet written.